like to go live like at least a couple times a week. Um, but now I'm here to talk to you guys about one of my clients uh, and with you guys about one, with one of my clients. Her name is Mai Cherie. She is awesome. And I brought her on here because I wanted to just have a conversation with her about her level up in her business, y'all. Um, and so I'm going to have her introduce herself in just a second. But I wanted y'all to invite a friend if you could. If you have a friend who needs to hear this about leveling up, what it requires of you to level up and the journey that it takes for you to go from, you know, one place in your business to another place, that that jump, right? And in between, then bring a friend along. Don't keep this information to yourself, y'all. Share the wealth, all right? I already see y'all on here. Y'all already hopping on. Cool, 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 cool. Let me know who you are. Just comment down below. Say, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Down in the comment section below, introduce yourself so I can know who you are. I can see who you guys are, who, who was watching with me. I can't see because I am on another software. So if I, if you want me to just say hey to you, go ahead and just comment real quick down below, okay? All right. So, y'all, we had some technical difficulties. Live was playing us. <laughs> but we're on here now, and I'm really excited to introduce um, my Cherie to you. Hey, Trinice, what's up, y'all? All right, introduce her to you. I'm going to have her introduce herself and what she does. Um, so go ahead, my Cherie, awesome person that you are, and introduce yourself and what you do. Hey, everyone. My name is my Cherie Rhodes. I am the trucking CFO. I help trucking companies to uh, scale from multiple six figures to million dollar companies uh, hey. with uh, basically standing compliance with federal and state tax regulations and uh, enabling them to build their family legacy. Yes. Love that. Love that. And so we're going to get right into the questions. It's going to be interview style, y'all. We're going to be super chill because my clients know that I'm a very laid back coach. I'm super chill. Um, even though I, I hit them with the no ma'ams and the absolutely not, right? <laughs> and the huh? Um, I'm actually really chill and laid back. And so we're going to have a conversation like we normally do when we're having a coaching call but I'm asking her questions, all right? So the first question I wanna ask you, my Cherie, you're gonna get right into it, y'all, is what were you struggling with in your business before working with me? Um, I would say getting my processes down pat. Mm. Mm. And one of, my, um, one of my close friends told me that she was doing a corporate contract and I was like, oh, that sounds nice. I would like to do a corporate contract. But in my head, I was like, how do you, how do I do a corporate contract? I had no clue where to start, where to begin. I didn't even think that I can think on a corporate contract level. So because she came to me with that and she's also in your program, I was like, oh, well, maybe if you could do it, maybe I can do it. And then that's when I started to think about, okay, well, what about me? Why not me? Yeah. And also the friend she's talking about is my client, Timelin. She is also an accountant and she's just, she's been with me for a while. So she knows how I work. She knows how I operate. And when she leveled up from getting, you know, working with regular clients and private clients to corporate contracts, it was a big deal for her in her business. And so I'm super excited that, you know, you guys had that conversation and you're here now. So you have that conversation. What was your first encounter with me? Like, let's talk about that. Cause I know we, um, you kind of went, came into my program a little bit differently than most people do. So what was your first encounter with me? Like my, my first encounter, I'm not going to lie guys. It was more so like, I don't know. I don't know if this is for me, Yeah. but Timberland was like, I, I trust my friend and I trust that my friend would not lead me astray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I knew that I wanted to kind of go in that direction. I just didn't know how I would go in a direction and she pointed me in the right direction but she was like you know her program is like ten thousand dollars i was like oh i don't know if i'm there yet <laughs> and then you rolled out you rolled out the retreat mm -hmm. so i was like, always enough said this is it this is my time this is god telling me i need to sign up for this one because ten thousand dollars was not in my budget but i could do this retreat i needed some time to woo side it was perfect. So that's when I hopped on the call with you and I was just like, you know how you teach us a person knows what they want. I was immediately like, you didn't have to tell me anything. Like I was, I was ready to go. And then I says, it could be like, it was, if I didn't sign up, it was because you unsold me because I was ready. I had my car. I was ready to go. I knew what I wanted. So yeah. 
I, I was trusting the process with Timbaland. And once the once you offered that retreat, I was like, oh, it's a done deal. I need yeah. Anne. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let's talk about the retreat. What was the retreat like for you? That was that the retreat was a whole different conversation, y'all. And I haven't really talked about the retreat and how we had to pivot to an online retreat. But talk about like, in your own words so people know, because I haven't we haven't really had this conversation. Talk okay. about your experience at the virtual retreat that we did. Okay, so first I was heartbroken. I'm just gonna tell y'all right now. I'm still heartbroken about this retreat because I wanted to, I wanted to go to the Virgin Islands. I wanted to be able to. I mean, I'm an accountant, so I wanted to be able to write off all of these business expenses and have a good time. Yeah, it was the perfect business trip. I had it all planned out. Yeah, um, and then we couldn't go. So then Gabrielle gets on this Zoom call and she starts showing us all these goodies. I mean, she just pulled them out the bag, and I'm like, I, I want that. I want my yoga mat. Send it to me. I want my planner. Um, it was, yeah. it was just like so hard. Like I was heartbroken that I couldn't go, and all of the good that you had. But once we got on the retreat, I'm not even gonna lie. I was like, we just gonna be deal. We just gonna be doing deep breathing and talk about fear. That's it. Mm, that's all we're gonna talk about, right? Like I'm trying to build this business, and that's all we're gonna talk about. And then I realized that that was the thing that I needed. Because before you can make money, before you can earn money, ladies, and I'm talking to somebody, before you can earn money, you gotta break down all of those fears and those barriers that you don't even know you have. Subconsciously is holding you back, boo, and you don't even know you have it. So. We had that time, and then we went on with Capricia. Capricia was amazing. She's literally like, <laughs> my. I had I had my room made up with candles and everything. Gabrielle yeah. told us to set the ambiance, right? Yeah. So we're in here breathing, and my husband walked in. <laughs> so <laughs> the breathing is like, I'm like, is everyone breathing like that? Like we were in here deep breathing, y'all. It was like it was, it was deep breathing, but it was a different kind of deep breathing. It sounded it was deep, like, like my husband's like, "What are y'all doing in there?" <laughs> Yo, like we we were actually so what she's talking about is Capricia came in and we did trauma release, mm -hmm. trauma and anger release, which was a part was was what was going to happen for our day one on fire day. Uh, so we had like five candles lit in the background and everyone was ready and anger release requires you to shout and scream and like be very vocal so i can imagine your husband was like what is happening what kind of retreat is this <laughs> when he walked in. that's how he was he was like okay i'm just gonna close the door now and you know we're in COVID, so i got husbands at the house kids at the house we're all in here and i'm like no close the door this is my time <laughs> But it was it was amazing. Like uh, what I think I said, that I feel like I don't know if you guys are religious or whatever, but I feel like I had clean call. Like it had been like a, a Holy Ghost moment. Like I was. I remember you said you feel like you got the you fell out and you got the white sheet on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, we didn't just do anger release and stuff like that. We had basically come on and talk about fear and comfort zone. To this day, my clients are still talking about stretch zone and risk zone and die zone. Like we knew the different levels of coming out of your comfort zone, right? And then we talked about, you know, stepping, you know, becoming a powerhouse with, with Chandra. And then we talked about um, getting corporate contracts and organizing your back end, right? So yeah, we 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 got in, we got in deep, and I didn't want it to just be about the business. It had to also be about the mental stuff, but not just the regular mindset. You are good enough, and you're good at what you do. It had to be information that was gonna help you to. You can create a habit, right? You can go back to it if you need to, and use it as you are growing in your business. So I, I, I'm happy that we talk about the retreat because that was a whole experience. I'm <laughs> still coming to the Virgin Islands. I know. I'm still, we, like, I'm still gonna do the ret a, a retreat here. We just gotta figure out this whole thing, and then we're gonna make it happen because it's my dream. Period. All right. So we're gonna do that. Let's actually talk about that. So one of the things you mentioned earlier was that, yeah. So the retreat, by the way, you guys was three thousand dollars. Okay. And so at the retreat, um, typically I would, you know, invite them to my second level program, which is ten thousand dollars. Right. My Sheree were like, okay, cool. I'm like, yeah, that's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to go. When we had the conversation after the, the retreat, I realized that she actually would be a better fit 
for my 24K program, y'all, my higher end offer. And so here we had the conversation now. So let's talk about that. Now you're like, I can't do 10K. Now I'm like, oh, you, 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 you should be in a 24K program. What was going through your mind there? I know you were like, this girl is crazy. <laughs> okay, so at first I was thinking, I can't do this. I had already talked to uh, Timbalyn before. Um, I'm going to do the 10K. This could this could work out. I can fit this into my budget. That was my comfort zone. Okay, mm -hmm. BC. That was my comfort zone. So then Gabrielle hops on the call on the last day, and she says, "I don't invite everyone to my 24K." She I said, Mark, I think you're more of the 10K. Y'all, that kind of got under my skin. That was like, what you mean I'm not ready for this? I'm ready for this. I can do this. <laughs> well, it's true. I honestly thought that. Like, I wasn't, it wasn't a sales thing. It was honestly like, and you know how I, you know how I teach. So you know that that's actually the truth. Like, I believe mm -hmm. in making sure that you're the right fit for something. But when we had the conversation, I was like, actually, no, she actually belongs here, right? So yeah, tell me more about that. What was going through your mind? Well, I was just thinking that, I think that was just my ego. Like, mm -hmm. I, what do you mean? I feel like I have my program. I've, I, I've built an audience. I, I have the platform. I should be able to be in this year round thing. And I think it was just the, you know how you say the fear of taking it away. Mm. I think the fear of you taking it away. Mm. And the thing is, it was not my intention. Like I wanted to, like, if you're the right fit for that, I want you to be there. But it's so interesting that you brought that up because guys, I want you to understand this is a good lesson. Actually, don't be afraid to be like, if you're like in your place where you're like, you know what? I don't think you're a good fit. Like, don't be afraid of that. Like I, like I told people, I'm okay with telling people no. Like I, I tell people no mm -hmm. to my programs all the time, all the time, because, you know, and I have to trust that I'm, 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 I'm making the right decision for my business because I know wh who I want to work with. This is a year long program. We're going to have to work together for a long time together. Right. And I want to make sure that you're the right fit for that. And so I wasn't sure at the time, but after we had our conversation, I was like, oh yeah, actually you're the right fit for this. Right. And yeah. I want to confirm that. Yeah. And, and and now also what I had to realize, and I think that the program was three months, right? Mm -hmm. I know I've, I've come to a realization in my life. You know how some people just say, oh, I know all the information. I can do it on my own. Yes, I know the information. But I'm not in denial that I need a coach to take me to the next level. Yeah. So three months wasn't good enough for me. I need more time. I need yeah. someone to stay on me. Um, there's a difference between me saying, oh, I'm going to do that today. Because if I tell myself I'm going to do it, I ain't got to do it. Girl, get over yourself. I'll be done. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. But if I tell Gabrielle I'm going to do it, if I tell my coach I'm going to do it, if I tell my my um, client, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a person where I know I need that accountability year round. So why not get that accountability while I was there? Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I knew that you were, when we had the conversation and we talked about it, I was like, yeah, you're a good fit for that. And also one of the reasons why I said that you weren't a good fit for the, for the longer end is because I typically invite people who are existing clients in that 10K program to that program. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit different. You were in the retreat, skipped that whole middle program, went to <laughs> that, right? So it was like, it was like, huh, what's going on here? This is not my system. But when we had the conversation, you were the perfect client for that program, right? So also, you guys, lesson learned. When you have a conversation with your potential clients, please don't just have a rigid thing in your mind. You might see that someone is better for a different program. <laughs> Right. And that's OK. That's why when you get a conversation with someone, your job is to listen and observe to see which what how you can best best serve them. Right. And it may be your higher end offer. And that's OK. All right. Hey, Canera. OK, so love that. All right. So 
the minute you decided to work with me, talk about that, that thing in your mind. And then you were like, okay, I want to go to her retreat. Now I'm going to join this high level program. What, what happened with you? I'm laughing at Timbaland's comment. <laughs> because I feel like this is, you guys are literally going on my roller coaster. Okay. Because I went from, I'm not going to afford that to, oh, this the retreat is a good deal. I'm going to go on it. I signed up. You don't tell me that I don't qualify for the high end. I signed the high end. Then I signed a contract and I called Gabrielle like, no. Nope. I sent her an email. I sent her an email. Got on the Zoom call. Like you know what? This is not for me. I'm a little bit stressed out in my life. COVID pandemic. I claim COVID. It's a lot going on. My kids here stressing me out, and that's when I got the no, ma'am. She emailed me, um, and just she was like, "No, this is this is self sabotage, and we're not we're not going to do that." Right. I was like, "Okay." So in my head, I'm like, I'm here what you're saying, but if I don't feel good by the end of this call, I'm out. Yeah. And yeah. and literally, we took the call, revamped the whole call. We were supposed to be going over offers and all that. Gabrielle's like, no, you don't need offers. Right now, you stressed out. You need to figure out what's going on. And that's when she sat down and helped me to get my processes together for my whole team because I was overworking. Mm -hmm. And that was the main reason why I was saying that I couldn't do the program because I had so much other stuff going on. For you guys who are familiar with the tax industry, it's tax time. The IRS giving out stimulus checks and they prolong the tax season. A sister was stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Gabrielle's like, no, we just need to figure that out and, and work that around. We were on the phone for about four hours. Um, but by the end of the call, I was like, Oh, I yeah, can do well, this. She literally outsourced about 80% of her business by the end of the call. I was like, so here's what happens with a lot of us who are type A personality, first of all. We're creative. We have a lot, we have a lot of things taking up what I like to call mental real estate. Right? We have all these things to do. I got all these things to do. I'm so busy. But when you actually put it on a paper, it's like, I don't think I'm as busy as I think in, in my mind, but you are. Your mind is operating as if you're doing all the work, right, my Cherie? <laughs> no, when you have me right now, she's like, okay, so let's go through what your day looks like, right? And I'm like, I got so much going on. I got this going on, this going on. She's like, okay, let's pull it up. Let's write it down. And you guys, I kid you not, we're writing this stuff down. We're writing it down. And she's like, what else? And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, what else? What else? Legit, we only had like four or five things on the paper. I'm like, no, no, Gabrielle, I'm doing more work than this. Uh, and that's when that's when she brought to my attention mental real estate, like people that I had not closed, people that I was thinking about closing, thinking that people that I know that I want to help, but they're not ready to come. People mm. that you try, I I had all these people on my mind, and they did not they did not deserve my mental real estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of times, what we do when we are getting into the the, the role of closing contracts and getting clients as, as service based entrepreneurs, people will be like, "Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming." So we like, yeah, I got this client coming. So now you're holding space in your mind for them. And it's like, when, when they come, I have all these things I got to do with them. And I have this, I got to onboard them and I got to do. So you're thinking as if you already have the client. And then you have this other thing that's happening. You get all these text messages. You haven't responded to them yet, but they're all there holding up space. So it feels like a lot. And so that's why it's one of the things that I love doing before I get, got into mainly just corporate contracts. I used to help my clients put implement systems and workflows into their business. And so that's what we did. We sat down and we, we mapped out her entire business workflow how she's going to get clients in, what's going to happen, even down to how she should be offering services, kind of work towards the end of the call because we just sat down and we delegated like 80% of her business, y'all. Like it was a lot. So she technically wasn't working on all these things right now, but these were things that she knew she would have to work on eventually that was causing her to feel overwhelmed. And so once that was done, she was like, I, I feel great. Right? How did you feel at the end of that call? I felt like, oh my God. Like, I've been trying to figure out how to outsource this stuff since, like, oh my God. Literally, 
I have I talk to my friends every day and they're like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how to do these processes because when tax season comes, it's going to be big and I need to make sure I got my processes in order. And I have been trying to figure out processes since October. Mm -hmm. So all since October, I'm thinking, 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 and I had not figured it out. And Gabrielle comes in and she's like, <laughs> done. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, yeah. like, and I think it was just me coming from a service-based business and I'm used to wearing all those hats. Mm -hmm. And I, I teach my clients that now um, just being, you're, you're being a worker bee. You got to put on your CEO hat. Yep, and that, that's like a, a whole different transition, a mind shift. It is. And it requires a lot of mental work. The mental work that we did at the retreat, the anger release, the trauma release, and the what we talk about in the, our coaching calls of, you know, creating your rituals that you can stay mentally sane, right? Every day in your business. And so I'm happy that we brought that up because it's so important to know that what you guys get to see, my client, I in, in the call, we were supposed to talk about her corporate offer. That was what the call was, was set out to, to be about. But when I identified that she was having this, problem which i identify with because i know that feeling it was a mental I, breakdown y'all yeah yeah once once i identify that i shifted re immediately because i want my clients to be served i want my clients to have what they need and that may mean shifting my agenda you know what i'm saying and so number one that's one of the best things like i love to do is i don't promote that i help people with their systems <laughs> i'm i help you with your corporate contracts but if my client needs that i have the skill and I have the know-how that I can help them with that. So I have clients who come to me, what am I doing with the finances? Here's what we do. What am I gonna do about this? I have this mental thing that's going on. Toxic friendships, all kinds of different stuff. But as a coach, I can pivot when I need to, events, whatever. But at the end of the day, the goal is, let's get you some corporate contracts. Yeah, okay, awesome. So let's talk about some other fears that came up for you surrounding investing on a high level like this. This is a 24K program. like. What is that? What, what was that like for you? Gabrielle. <laughs> this was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like I had, I know I had got to a point in my, my mind where I knew I was going to invest. So I'm not the person that's not going to invest. I know I need to invest in my business. I identified that. Yeah. I didn't know that I was going to invest on that level yet. Mm. Um, but it was for a corporate contract. You know, like if someone can teach you something better, then you need to take it to that level. And what um, BC taught us, <laughs> she said, we, we had a little, we had our stretch moment, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm comfortable. I was comfortable with investing 10K. I wrapped that around my head. I was comfortable. All right. It might have made me a little uncomfortable, um, but my fear, my fear came in when you said 24K mm. and just reading a lot of the books that I've been reading. Like, if you don't know if something is right or wrong, like fear comes in and be real logical for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like BC taught us, fear has been with us all our life. <laughs> so how fear, we was our coming. life. <laughs> fear was coming and I was like, I was like, you know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know if the program works. I have all of those doubts in my mind. Mm. But what I've been learning is that if it's right, mm. that's what fear tries to hold you back. So I'm like, okay, this must be right because this is scaring the shit out of me. Am I supposed <laughs> to say that? It's scaring, You're good. You're good. It's scaring me. It scares me. So that's that's why I did it. Because it scared me to the point where almost uh, being paralyzed. And then I talked myself into it. Then I quit the program. And then I talked myself back into it again. And then I'm like, Gabrielle, am I doing this? So every week I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Y'all, this is why when she closed her first high-end contract, we were all like screaming, essentially. Like, we're going to get into that in just a second. Because <laughs> she was in the retreat. When we were talking about prices, like what would you charge for corporate contracts? We'll be saying like 20K. My street space would be like, <laughs> like she was not about to be charging no 20K. She was like, I can't do that. Even when we were talking about like 5K, you were just like, mm, you know what I mean? 
And so, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about your thoughts. Like what you, you didn't think you could sell at a higher level. Let's talk about what that was all about. What was that about? Let's get into that. I, I think that's, I think that was just me being fearful, feel for, feel fearful that people won't pay mm. my value or me just undervaluing myself because yeah. the services that I provide, mm. I'm already providing to my clients on the, on that level already, just yeah. not saying the price that comes with it because I'm afraid that people will say, oh no, or not want to work with me. Yeah, her, uh, she, the amount of work you were doing, you were charging like $1,500 for packages. That was crazy. Cause you were charged, you were out here doing a lot, which is one of the reasons why you felt so overwhelmed because your service did not align with the income that you were getting from that client. And so there's a disconnect energetically already there. But yeah, what else was coming out for you? Because I remember we were talking about prices when we were like putting down how much you want to charge. You were just like, I don't know about this, y'all. Because I, I guess I didn't, I didn't, that was before we were like, what price do you see? I hadn't necessarily had a package in play. I had all of these different services that I could provide, but how can I provide that on a corporate level? And will the corporation want to work with me? Yeah. Um on that level and i thought i had to create this grand scheme of oh i do this i do this i have to go and do all this and you're like no you're going to do exactly what you do on an everyday basis and you're going to show them why they need you and that was like oh okay in my head i i was going to come to this retreat and i was going to get a whole new revamp revamp lifestyle and you're like no what do you do now how can we make that a corporate contract yeah and the thing is, y'all, one of the things that we had to talk about with you, especially a lot, was the embrace and body and power. Embracing her, right? We were like, have to, we have to embrace her, the most powerful version of you. And that's a daily thing, you guys. It doesn't happen overnight. Every day, I still have to embrace her, right? Embrace him, the most, empower, the most powerful version of ourselves, right? And then we start to embody that person. So every day, you got to show up as if you are that chick, right? Like, it doesn't just stop. It happens every day. And that's when you're able to say, okay, I can charge this much money, right? But it starts with the mindset. It starts with here because no matter how much strategy I gave you, if we didn't work on this part of you, you would not be able to charge that amount of money on a call. Yeah. It happen, when right? I started to, I feel like when I really started to be comfortable with it is when we went through and we mapped out the program. Mm -hmm. And in this program, one, you made me realize that I already do it already. This is the stuff I'm already doing for my clients already. And then I go through and I look at the value of each of the things that I'm doing. So now I see it as a whole. Before I was just kind of piecing it together, helping them out. Now I see it as a whole. And when I was afraid to charge the $5,000 to $20,000, I'm like, wait a minute, all this together is more than... It's honestly more than the program is right now. It should be more. Mm -hmm. Working on working on getting it up there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it may it, when I sat down and I looked at the program and and like did all the things that I do. Like if you go and get this service from someone else, all of the stuff that I'm pouring into you, it's more than what I give you. Not to mention, I, I was worn out. Because when a, when someone is just paying you fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, you got one question, one question, okay? And in the midst of a pandemic, you have full services for that fifteen hundred dollars already. Yes. And so, in the midst of a pandemic, uh, the people are now asking six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven questions. You like? <laughs> no, no. Like, I want to provide that service, and that was just, uh, you know, my my way of providing that extra care mm. for my clients it's fine but when i start to have to provide all of that extra service and the pay didn't line up i kind of started to feel kind of like uh towards my clients because they're they're they were mentally draining my life source mm. draining me that's so important that you said that because when i keep telling people to raise your rates it's not just about, oh, I want money. It's about energetically, y'all, because money it literally is an, it's energy, right? So if you're going to put out all this energy out there, the energy you receive back needs to be in alignment. If you're putting out a bunch of energy and what you're getting back is not the same money, 
right? It could be gratitude. It could be money, right? You're mm-hmm. let's say you're helping someone. You're always helping your friend. You're always helping, 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 and your friend is always like not taking your advice, but like doing the same thing over and over again, and then coming to you like crying about the same thing. You're gonna be drained. Because the energy received is not the energy that you're giving out. It doesn't align. Same thing with money. When you're providing a lot and you are the kind of person that goes all up for your clients and the money that you're getting back doesn't align, right? The energy you receive it doesn't align. There's going to be, someone's going to be drained, either you or the client, right? On the other hand, if you're paying a lot of money and you're not being served, you're going to feel drained, right? So it's, 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 a, in a, it's an energetic exchange right and so that's why it's so important for you to be charging based on the results that you get number one and what you know in your heart you deserve to be receiving for your time your effort your energy your knowledge your brilliance etc so 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 important so let's talk about um that first time you closed a corporate contract Woo, let's get into that how did you get from anybody to pay me twenty thousand five thousand even to uh just 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 kind of close the 30k contracts just casual how do we get there there was nothing casual about it <laughs> let's just get that on it's off the table now there was nothing casual about it um but because i had that clarity in my offer i was able to walk them through what's going on um and just i had the confidence that i can help this person like i can legit help this person but it was it was scary. It was scary. I'm like, okay, this is the price. He's like, yep. All right, I'm ready. I'm like, you ready? <laughs> and, and, and then I, it was like I didn't. I was like, okay, he ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, when you have that clarity of what you know, because let me tell you, you don't have to have everything perfect on paper, y'all. You already have it here. It's it's in here. You are the brilliance. You are the knowledge. It's already here. You don't have everything perfect. You don't have to know everything. You just know I can help them. I've done it before. And this is what they need. Here's the price. Now you have the confidence. That's how it works, y'all. But it doesn't happen. As you can see, it did not happen for my Sheree overnight. It took some mindset work. It took some support from a coach. It took some me having to see that she's going through this because let me tell you if we didn't work on her systems on her workflow she would not be able to close that contract because she didn't have the the space you got to create space for what you want and she didn't have the space for that client with how her business was flowing she didn't have space for that client so if we have to create space for her to get that client right and then she went ahead yeah. and like, was like yo that's gonna be 30k because now she has space for it yeah so you may have a lot that going on in your business and you're like, I want to make all this money, but you have not created space for your contracts. And as a result, you're going to sabotage that every single time. What were you going to say, my Cherie? Oh, literally. We were on a call about pricing, right? And I was like, I can't charge that. I, I can't charge that. And Gabrielle's like, why not? Why you can't charge? I was like, because people are not going to pay it. And you said, you need to create an offer for your dream client to come. Mm. So we created these offers. This is before the offer was even done because you guys got to realize I closed this contract before myself was solidified. So we just had some numbers flowing and I was like, okay, I'm going to create this offer. What is she saying? And literally the people started coming. Yep. Let me tell you, she has people like, I want this million dollar CFO package. How do I sign up? I'm seeing her comments and I'm like, look at this girl. Look at, look at her. Look at her, just out here, just being great, okay? But you have so what? A part of creating space is creating the offer for them to come to. You want high end contracts, but you have nothing for them. You want high end clients, but your business is clouded with no systems. You don't have anything organized on the back end, and you want these contracts. Well, let me tell you, when you are closing contracts, you have to have the space mentally in your business, and actually with a program that they can close that you can close them into. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was awesome. We just celebrated you. So like I was just in celebration mode with you because I remember the call. You were like, I can't do this program, Gabrielle. I, I don't have it from not only closing that contract, but like continuing to close contracts in because she has this program for a year long, which is 30 grand. And then she has it for three months, which is 5,000 y'all. Right. And so she's getting people coming in like crazy. Like we want this. We want this. 
you got to create space for what you want, y'all. And so that's so like I'm super excited for you. So what would you say to anyone who's been wanting to work with me and join one of my programs? They may not be a 24K, it might be my 10K program or whatever else, but they're afraid because of, oh my God, it's a lot of money or whatever else. What would you say to them? I would say that, I don't know, you know, I'm transparent. You're not ready. You're not ready. And until you're ready to take the next step, you're going to have to stretch yourself, not to the point of where you're comfortable. You got to stretch yourself to the point of S-H-I-T, O-S-H-I-T. And then, because mm. you, you get in a program and it's safe, it's, it means nothing to you. If you fail, it means nothing to you. You got to get in that program where it's going to scare the S-H-I-T out of you. Mm -hmm. And every time that I make this payment, I need to make sure I got what I need to be making the calls. I need to make sure I do it. It has to be so uncomfortable that you are, you're going to make a move no matter what. Mm -hmm. And Let me tell you, that's when it works. Same thing for me. I'm in a program where I'm paying out large amounts of money, four figures a month, and I have to show up. You hear me? Like you have to show up. And so I don't tell y'all to do anything that I'm not myself doing. You understand? Yeah. I'm doing the work as well. I'm doing things. I'm putting myself in uncomfortable situations also. Yeah. And so yeah. That, that's awesome advice, my Sheree. Anything else you want to say to them? Or are you good? Um, <laughs> I mean, you just got to take, I'm, I'm taking one of BC's uh, statements. She said, you're going to take fear, tell for it, fear to come on. Come on, girl. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, but we're going over here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I'm at. All right. Okay, fear. Come on, come on. Yeah. We scared together. I'm I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I am I'm scared. Yeah. But I'm still committed. I'm still making the move. I still show up. Mm -hmm. Scared and all, I show up. You do, and it pays off because the program that you joined was twenty four thousand and you closed thirty eight thousand in two weeks. Two weeks, y'all. We just got and started. <laughs> You hear me we just getting started all right so um super excited super excited for you i know that this is just the beginning like when i when i hear you talk and i'm just smiling because i already know you're about to take off you already are taking off right and so yes bc do it afraid y'all i don't join people like tend to be like oh I, I don't have the money in my account right now so i can't join the program y'all when we make decisions to join programs or do anything we don't go based on what's in our account we go based on where we know we should be, right? And the fact that we we have faith that we're going to show up and do the work, right? How you do anything is how you do everything. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Uh, BC says, you've taken some courageous moves, girl. That's boss. Love it. I'm going to put it up on the screen. That's so dope. Facts. <laughs> thank you. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. All right? So, yeah. Thank you so much, Norman. I really wanted to bring this to y'all because I always believe that it's important to have a client say what it's like to work with me from their perspective because i can say whatever i want to say and my sure is in my year-long mastermind and already she's already made that money back in contracts already right and she's this is just the beginning all right so i want to give you the opportunity to tell people how to get in contact with you or keep in contact with you um i know you have a, a strategy call that you offer so you can go ahead and talk about that now real quick Yes. Okay. So if you guys want to get in contact with me, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, and I offer free 30-minute uh, strategy sessions where we can dive in deep to see if you're a good fit. I want to make sure that I'm helping the people that want to be helped. Not everybody is ready um to take on take their business to the next level and i, I tell people you gotta put on take off that worker b hat and put on that ceo hat i'm ready to work with ceos and take them to the next level so they're able to make millions and build that family legacy awesome and so, so what she does y'all is she is a trucker's accountant she mainly primarily works with people who are in the trucking industry and now she's offering her cfo services so she works alongside those of you guys who are truckers if you know someone who has a trucking company y'all go ahead she's gonna leave the link to book a strategy call in there send that link to your friend all right she takes yes. it to the next level all right Cool. So guys, if you've been wanting to work with me on a personal level, I live my, I'm going to leave my link to my, um, to my calendar in the comment section. Actually, let me go ahead and see if I can do that right quick. 
sometimes Facebook does weird things. I'm not Facebook, Be Live does weird things. I don't think it's gonna let me, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave the link to book a strategy call with me in the comment section as well. If you wanna take your business to the next level, like my Sheree has been able to in her business, in a short amount of time, y'all, that's what I specialize in, short amount of time, um, go ahead and book that call with me. It's um, bit.ly slash coaching, capital C, with lowercase w, Gabrielle, capital G coaching with Gabrielle, go ahead and book you a call. Let me tell y'all, my calendar is getting pre booked. So you're probably not going to see any calls for Ju for June. Probably the next one is going to be in July, but go ahead and get on there because it's filling up really fast. All right. Thank you so much, my Sheree, for coming on here. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you in no general. Problem. Um, and it's <laughs> you. This I was hope fun. I was able to help someone. Yes, you. I think you were. I think you were. Um, so happy to have you on. I'm super excited to see what happens in your business over the next few months, over the next year. And uh, yeah, we'll y'all will see her. Go ahead and add as a friend on Facebook, y'all. Go ahead and follow her page. She's hilarious. Her personality is just so funny <laughs> to me. Uh, but y'all, thank you so much, BC, for putting that in there. Um, y'all, just go ahead and stay connected with both of us. Go ahead and book. Her call if you're in trucking, my call if you want to go ahead and level up and co close corporate contracts and high-end clients. And we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye.